If you've seen the 2006 movie Talladega Nights, you may think movie antagonist Jean Girard shares a resemblance with Simon Pagino. If you think this, you are not alone. A lot of fans tend to see the similarities, and Simon himself embraces it. At his first award banquet upon winning his first championship in America, a nervous and shy Simon takes to the stage, walks to the mic, and says, I have defeated you, Ricky Bobby. An unexpected move that sends the crowd into laughter. Hey guys, are you doing this routine again? Ricky, Bobby, Gene Girard? Cut it out. We gotta go win some races. The well-natured Simon Pierre Michel Paginot was born in. Yeah, um, no, I'm actually from Kentucky. You can <laughs> hear the accent. Yeah, uh, no, he was born in Poitiers on the 18th of May, 1984. He lived and grew up in the western part of France in Montmoyon. Montmoyon is an old city branded as the city of writing, also known for history, museums, and macaroons. Simon still has a home here and likes to return, especially around Christmas time. The Pagano family has deep ties to this area of France. Simon's father is Christian Pagano. Like his father Pierre, Christian is in the grocery supermarket business. The Pagano patriarch was manager and franchisee of a Leclerc supermarket location in Montmoyon. Christian is a shrewd businessman with a knack for managing finances and also a joy of automobiles. He and his friends would often visit the nearby Circuit du Val de Vienne and would do track days on the weekend racing around in French hatchbacks. His passion for cars and track days would lead Christian to taking over the role of financial director for the track operations. Even with these things in mind, the Pagano family had no experience in motorsports or no connections to people in the know. When Simon had decided he wanted to become a professional racer, his father took a pragmatic view on the matter. He didn't think it was a realistic idea, and while they were not poor, they did not have the wealth to finance a racing career. Christian did instill education into Simon. He had Simon work in his store, and after the age of 18, sent Simon to a business school. He wanted Simon to take over the family business. Simon had different plans. And while Christian did not want to write a blank check for Simon to play with, he did give his son advice in the matters of making money and accruing sponsors for his motorsports dream. While his father was very pragmatic, Simon's mother, Sylvie Pagano, encouraged Simon's more artistic ambitions. Sylvie was born in Chauvigny. She lived in the modern part of the city, and her grandmother lived in the medieval part of the city. She remembers playing hide-and-seek through the old ramparts in the Montmoyon octagon. She lived in Montmoyon for over 30 years and pursued a career in dancing. She is now a choreographer and experienced in the dynamic relaxation art of sophrology. Sylvie really pushed her son with support while he was trying to make his dream a reality. She worked with Simon to help deal with stress and become a positive reinforcement. She was also the driving force that helped Simon make his transition from carts to cars. I'll talk about that in a moment, but first we'll start with a young Simon. Simon's passion for driving starts at the ages of two or three, where he would drive a children's quad bike around their home in the French countryside. The helmet he wore as a child had a design that he has carried in his career. The helmet was red with blue stripes, and even in situations where he has to change his colors due to sponsorship, he still keeps this similar striping pattern. It seemed both Simon and his older sister Julie would inherit their father's interest in cars. The family had an old car at their house, and the siblings would argue and take turns over who got to drive it around the yard or to the letterbox to fetch the mail for their mother. Being in Europe, it was much easier for Simon to view Formula One on the TV, but he would also catch the occasional IndyCar race, like the Indy 500. From a young age, his racing hero has been Ayrton Senna, but when Simon saw Nigel Mansell make the move to kart IndyCar after the 92 season, it really confirmed the competitive value of the series. In his mind, he saw Formula One and IndyCar as equals. He especially noticed the bright white and red Marlboro branded cars of Roger Penske, who always seemed dominant. The Pagano family would humor Simon's dreams by getting him a go-kart. He would begin driving around age 8, but Simon recalls his first competitive race at age 10 very vividly. He says it was a dream come true, but it was also a humiliating disaster. It was raining, and Simon would spin off at every corner. He would have to push start his own kart again, because they have no clutch. People were making fun of him for his lack of ability, and he remembers this. It pushes him forward. He wanted a race so bad, he didn't care what they said. While racing carts, Simon would get a little bit of experience in cars. 
due to his father's position as CFO at the Circuit du Val de Vienne. While his father was at the track for financial meetings, Simon got the opportunity to drive cars on the track even at the ages of 10 or 12. In the early years of karting, the Paginots would take Simon to French Federation of Automobile Sport karting events. Simon recalls at the beginning his kart was pretty poor and even had the wrong engine attached to it. Throughout the early and mid-1990s, Simon participated in the FFSA Mini-Me class of karting. Around age 13, he would graduate to the cadet class of karts. Most of his karting career featured racing at regional levels. At the same time, Simon worked in his father's supermarket to help fund his racing endeavors. Between the ages of 14 and 18, he worked in the video game department restocking shelves and eventually working up to managing and ordering new stock. Around age 16, his mother asked a team owner at the local circuit to give Simon the opportunity to test out one of his single-seater cars. The owner was impressed by Simon and wanted to support him to race in a driver selection being hosted by French fuel company Elf. Simon won the driver selection and with the support of Elf afforded himself the opportunity to compete in Formula Renault in 2001. In the French Formula Renault Elf Campus Championship, Simon would take 4 wins, 12 podiums, and 6 poles in 17 races, but would finish 2nd in the championship. The next year, he would finish 3rd in the French FFSA Formula Renault Championship. During the same time, his father still wanted him to work in the grocery business and had Simon attend business school at age 18. He spent 4 months in a classroom and 8 months working in a supermarket in another part of France. Here he managed produce, dairy, and the bakery department of the store. Simon still wanted to become a race car driver and feels like at this point in life he missed an opportunity. Without his family being intimate with the racing world, Simon didn't understand the value in physical and mental exercise required to become a professional race car driver. He feels like if he knew then what he knows now, his connections with Elf and Renault could have opened up a doorway to Formula One. In 2003, he finished third in the form of the Renault 2.0 Euro Cup. At this time, Christian Pagano did not want to write a blank check they could not afford for their son to play with, but he instead arranged a way for Simon to finance his racing. He helped establish a driving school at their local track. Simon would teach around 350 clients by renting out Formula Renault cars, BMWs, Ferraris, and Lotuses, then watch his clients drive, correct their trajectory, give them tips on throttle and brake control, and finish the day with a passenger ride around the track. While still competing, he would finish 2nd in the 2004 Formula Renault 2.0 Euro Cup and 6th in the French Formula Renault 2.0 Championship while participating in less than half of the season's races. In 2005, he would move into the rebranded World Series by Nissan, the Formula Renault 3.5 Series. Simon would join Saulnier Racing, which was in its second season of competition in the series and had not yet won a race. And it would remain that way as Simon would finish 16th with 30 points, but he would beat teammate 2001 French F3 champion Dio Fukuda, who only scored 11 points. The mildly unsuccessful season, trouble finding sponsors, and pressure from his father to work in the family business almost saw the end of Simon's career. Simon made a final deal with his father. Using money from his racing school, some sponsor support, and a little help from his father, Simon would go to the USA to participate in the 2006 Champ Car Atlantics Championship, which would award $2 million US dollars to the winner. If he didn't win, he would return home and work in the supermarket industry. Driving for Team Australia, Simon would only get one win that year, but through consistency would end up becoming champion. This was also the year that comedy movie Talladega Nights came out. Embracing the similarities between himself and the movie antagonist, when accepting his champion award, he walked up on stage and quoted the Frenchman from the movie, surprising the audience. The next year, he was promoted to the Champ Car League with Team Australia. He wouldn't get any wins in 2007, but would finish 8th in the standings and had finally established himself in a top-tier racing league with a quality team. Unfortunately, this would evaporate in the 2008 season as Champ Car would combine with the Indy Racing League to form the IndyCar series, and there was no place left for Simon to race. His reputation would find him a landing spot with Gilles de Ferrin Motorsports, running most of the LMP2 season in the American Le Mans series, getting three podiums. He would also participate in his first 24 hours of Le Mans for the Team Orica in an LMP1 car. In the 2009 24 Hours of Le Mans, he would race for Pescara Low Sport, but the car would retire early, just as in the previous year. Driving for Peugeot in the Le Mans series at Spa-Francorchamps, he would take the pole, fastest lap, and victory. 
Meanwhile, in the ALMS, he would see a pretty successful year with DeFerrin Motorsports, getting five victories and finishing second in the championship to the Patron Highcroft Racing team. In the following year, he would join Highcroft Racing and would win the ALMS championship. He would again partner Team Peugeot and win the Spa race, and in the 2010 24 Hours of Le Mans, teammate Sebastian Bourdais would put the Peugeot team on pole. Unfortunately, the car would retire early with suspension failure. The year 2011 would see a lot of partial championship participations. A race in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge, a guest appearance in the Formula F Super Series, an invitation to the V8 Supercar Surfer Paradise event, races for Highcroft and Peugeot in the ALMS, and races for Peugeot in the Le Mans series. He would again join Peugeot for the 24 Hours of Le Mans. In the closing of the race on older tires, Simon would be given the task of trying to chase down the Audi of Andre Lauderer. He would finish 13.8 seconds behind the leader. Simon says flying the flag for France and being able to watch the winner cross the finish line after a 24-hour race hurts. While racing for Peugeot, Simon had participated in numerous 35-hour test sessions simulating driver swaps, nighttime driving, and wet conditions. Simon credits these for his comfortability in the rain today. Back in the USA, Simon would make a break into the IndyCar series. At the recommendation of Will Power, Simon would fill in for Anna Beatrice at Dry Ryan Bolt Racing at Barber Motorsports Park where he would finish 8th. He would fill in again in round 12 at New Hampshire and for HBM Racing for Simona Di Silvestro in round 13 at Infineon Raceway. Simon says these calls would come two days before the race, he would fly in from France and race jet lagged with steering wheels that didn't have matching grips and seats that didn't fit. He would have to hold himself into the seat with his elbows to counteract the g-forces. It was painful, but he knew he had to meet certain expectations if he wanted an opportunity to be called back. In 2012, he would again participate in the Surface Paradise event and the LMP1 ALMS event at Sebring, but his hard work in IndyCar had paid off as he would get the opportunity to drive the whole season with Schmidt Hamilton Motorsports. In his rookie year, he would get four podiums and finish fifth in the point standings. While racing for the Schmidt team, Simon recalled his childhood dream of racing for Roger Penske. Simon had the business knowledge to know how to market himself, and always presented himself as professionally as possible. Gone was his long hair from when he first arrived in the Americas, and he always wore business slacks when not in his fire suit. Then his performance on the track did the rest of the talking. In 2015, Roger Penske would make a fourth team to accommodate Simon to join Team Penske. A year later, he awarded Rogers Faith with a championship in the IndyCar Series. Since that time, he has made multiple runs at the championship with Penske and won the 2019 Indy 500. As of the 2022 season, Simon has left the Penske stable and started a new journey with Meyer Shank Racing. Besides wanting to be successful in his new team, Simon has said he would love to try NASCAR, return to Le Mans to better his second place finish, continue racing sports cars, do some rally racing like he used to do for fun at once upon a time in France. And he would like to start a racing school, like he used to have, which helped him to fund his career. In addition, Simon married longtime girlfriend Haley in 2019, had baby boy Marley in 2021, and of course, he's been longtime father to his beloved dog Norman. And while his family is extremely proud of how he has lived his dream, should he ever decide to do so, I am sure his father would be excited if he came home and took over a supermarket or two. Why, well, I've never done it. Ever? No. So the last few subjects of my videos have had some detail that have linked them together, uh, but my next subject is a bit of a stretch. When I was googling information about Talladega Nights, there was one driver I kept seeing being photoshopped into the role of Ricky Bobby, even though he doesn't drive a NASCAR and is not American. But he is a bit of a Millivora Capensis. Uh, so if you can guess whatever that means, leave a comment below. And if you want to see when my next video is posted, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Driver Profiles.